Welcome to my switching routing and wireless essentials course. This should be the CCNA version 7 curriculum. This is the second of three courses. All right, welcome. So we're going to be doing a lab 11.1.10 implementing port security. I'm going to go ahead and modify my window a little bit, make it all nice and pretty. So this is actually a pretty short lab on port security. First thing is to note is PC1 is 10.10.10.10. Uh, 10, 10, 10, 10. PC2 is 10.10.10.11. 10, 10, 10. Rogue uh, laptop is 10.10.10.12. 10, 10, 10. And the switch VLAN 1 is 10.10.10.2. 10, 10, 10. All right, with that said, read the background. All right, I'm just gonna scroll down a little bit. All right, so. How we configure access uh, port security is get to switch one, get to our CLI, get to our global configuration, comp D. We're gonna go ahead and set up port security for the first two ports. We can do an int range, FA zero slash one through two, and we can just turn it on with a switch port, port security. There it is, it's turned on. The issue is we need to go ahead and configure some of the features so we can make sure it's usable for what we need it to do. We want to set it so that we have a maximum of one MAC address. So port security, maximum, we're going to set it to one. And that basically says learn one MAC address and that is it. Next. Configure the, the port so that the MAC address of the device dynamically is learned and added to the running configuration. We're going to do that with the switch port mode security MAC address sticky command. This will set the violation modes that the fast ethernet are not disabled when violations occur. So we're going to do that by setting the violation mode to a slightly different function. All right, so we're going to do switch port, port security, MAC address, sticky. And that's what we have to do. Next, we're going to go ahead and set up our violations. So switch port, yeah, switch port, violation, we want it to be restrictive. And that's it. So here we did our sticky. The sticky basically says to save the MAC address in the running configuration. Violation. And lastly, we're going to go ahead and disable all of the other un unused ports. So exit and range FA 0 slash 3 through 24 and gig one through two, shut down. Oh. I don't know why I did shut down and a D, but I meant just shut down. Administratively turns off all of those ports. So with C, we've done our MAC address sticky, we've done our violation mode, and next we've done our disabling all of those portions. So from PC1, let's ping PC2. Ping 10.10.10.11. That is the IP for PC2. From PC2, let's ping PC1. Ping 10.10.10.10. Oh, one too many periods. And it works. We're going to do a MAC address table. So we can see there are two MAC addresses, one on FA2, one on FA1. Those are the MAC addresses. So let's do a show run begin interface. Show run pipe begin Oh, 
interface. So our show run begins at the interface. Here we have our addresses. You'll notice that the sticky actually learned our MAC addresses. So let's go and let's do a show port security. And we can see our interfaces. Let's do a show port security address. We can see the MAC addresses we've learned. So we've done that, we've done that. Now, set the rogue access out of the rogue lab prop to any unused port and notice that the thing is dead. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug in my access point using a straight through cable. Fast Ethernet, go to three. It's turned off. That's because we have disabled port three. Mouse over it, it still says port three is still down. So enable the port and verify rogue access is there. All right, so back to our global configuration, back to our interface, zero slash three, no shuts. As soon as I turn it on, it goes active, it went green. From our rogue access point, our PCA, ping PCB, ping the switch. I wasn't expecting the switch to, to pop up, but with ARP, there it goes. So we can. We can access all of those devices. So that's done. Enable the port. Verify. Enable. After verification, shut down the port. It is now turned off. Port security, you still only see the ports. But if we do a show MAC address table, You'll see that when we disabled the port, it actually scrubbed that MAC address out of the table. So next, we want to disconnect PC2 and connect the rogue laptop. Actually, I'm going to, I want to be able to see the config uh, my, my CLI and my laptop. So when I actually go to disconnect, okay, apparently not, it did not like that. I'll just unplug it. Connect to ETH2, connect ETH2 to my laptop. The second it kicked on, you'll see that the uh, ETH2 change state to down line protocol in the interface is still down. It went up and it is functioning now. So hold on, I'm gonna read the instructions. So that we've already done, we, we're on G now. Let's see if we can ping PC one, you'll notice green lights, it's, they're active. But it's not pinging. Why? So as to show port security, you will notice there is a violation on it now. And you'll notice it has a violation count of four. I just said four ICMP messages. If I do it again, you'll notice that as I send more IP, uh, ICMP messages, each 
frame that it receives that's in violation after it increases the counter. Should be eight, because I sent eight uh, packets and all eight were rejected. So now let's go ahead. I want to see interface FA there slash two. So the port status, it's enabled. It's secure, but in an up state, and it's restricted. Secure and up basically means it's going to be dropping any frame that is not for uh, that uh, specific uh, location. So what I mean by that is I'm going to unplug it from the laptop. I'm going to plug it into the computer. Or PC2, and you'll notice immediately I'm able to connect again. If I do a show port security, it's going to show up, it's going to still show secure up, it's going to show restricted, but you're going to notice it's still actually processing and uh, dealing with traffic. You'll notice the violation count is now reset and it will show you the last MAC address that it had learned. It's still functioning. So that is how to configure port security in a nutshell. We'll so, uh, you'll notice that we have a completion of 100%. If we check the results, we should see that we have full marks on everything. If you have any questions, reach out. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out. Again, with this material, being able to ask questions and discuss some of the topics in the lecture help build long-term retention, so do not be afraid to communicate with this topic. Again, I'm here if you need anything. Thank you.